Hello and welcome to the video podcast series by reasonfortrainees.com. This is uh, the answers uh, session to the quiz that we asked uh, in the first week of April. And the question that we posed was, uh, we showed this picture and he highlighted a particular nerve as that can be seen in this diagram. Um, the picture belongs to the interscaline area. And what we asked was uh, to identify uh, the nerve being highlighted. The choices that were given were C5 nerve root, suprascapular nerve, phrenic nerve, and dorsal scapular nerve. Well, obviously the answer is phrenic nerve. However, let's have a closer look at why that is so. Uh, and I find this question particularly interesting because there is another facet to this uh, question, two in fact, which we'll learn soon. Um, let's have a look at this diagram. And this basically shows us the uh, brachial plexus anatomy. Brachial plexus is the constellation of nerve bundle formed by uh, the upper cervical and T1 nerve root collectively. Um, and uh, these uh, start from the roots which uh, come together. And these uh, nerve roots being C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Sometimes they get an innervation from C4 and then it's called a prefixed brachial plexus and sometime an innervation from T2 in which case it is called postfix. So these nerve roots uh, come together and uh, result in formation of trunks namely being the upper, middle and lower trunk uh, which divide into anterior and posterior divisions uh, which come together differently to form cords which can be lateral, medial or posterior and these three cords then divide into different branches which are the terminal branches of the brachial plexus uh, which includes the median nerve, ulnar nerve, radial nerve, muscular cutaneous and axillary nerve. Uh, once we have learned that let's have a closer look at the upper part of the brachial plexus. Um, so in this diagram what we can see are the five nerve roots from which the brachial plexus originates namely the C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Of interest, uh, there are certain branches of brachial plexus that originate from above the clavicle. Otherwise, most of the branches uh, of the brachial plexus originate from below the clavicle, so there is a distinction. These branches which uh, uh, originate from above the, clavicle, uh, above the clavicle include uh, branches coming from the roots which are two of them and two of them coming from the trunks. Uh, the ones coming from the roots as can be seen here are the nerve to rhomboids or the dorsal scapular nerve which supplies the rhomboids and the levator scapulae. The long thoracic nerve which supplies the serratus anterior muscle. The nerve to subclavius which supplies the subclavius muscle. Uh, which basically lies in front of the subclavian artery. And finally, the suprascapular nerve, uh, which supplies the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus. Interestingly, we can also see a twig uh, of C5 giving supply to the phrenic nerve. Mind you, phrenic nerve is not a part of brachial plexus. It is a part of cervical plexus. And therefore, uh, it originates from C3, C4 and C5. But it has got implications while we are performing the interscaline block. And that is why it becomes interesting to study the anatomy of phrenic nerve wherever we are trying to do the interscaline block. Um, now let's go back to the diagram that we posed to you and try and understand how that becomes important for us. Uh, We've just discussed the four branches which originate from above the clavicle. Uh, so when we have a look at uh, the branches here, we can see the C5 nerve roots. We can see uh, the dorsal scapular nerve. Note that it can be seen supplying the levator scapular muscle. And then we can see branches uh, of uh, the long thoracic nerve. Note it can be seen here supplying the thoracic madness which is the same as serratus anterior. Then we can see twigs uh, from the brachial plexus that supply the subclavius uh, uh, muscle. Uh, see how it is uh, coming anterior to the subclavian artery. 
Subsequently, we can see that the suprascapillary nerve, uh, which supplies the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus. The important thing about this nerve is uh, that it supplies most of the joint uh, uh, sensations, most of the joint capsule uh, in the shoulder joint. Uh, so, um, alternative to interscleen block is blocking suprascapular nerve along with axillary nerve. This is commonly performed by the surgeons at the site of surgery. And finally, we can see one structure which is coming um, over the anterior scalene, coming medially. This is the phrenic nerve. Uh, and its anatomy is quite interesting, in fact. Let's have a closer look at the phrenic nerve. So here we can see the brachial plexus that is emerging from the interscalene groove between the two scalene muscles. And this structure that comes medially is the phrenic nerve. Uh, the important implication is that at the level uh, of cricoid cartilage, phrenic nerve lies in very close proximity to the interscalene uh, groove and therefore is uh, very close to brachial plexus. Any attempt to block the brachial plexus at C6 level would invariably involve the phrenic nerve. Uh, however, because of its anatomical distribution, as it goes cordially, it uh, crosses the anterior scalene muscles to come and lie more medially, and therefore the distance between the brachial plexus and the phrenic nerve increases as it moves cordially. In fact, this has been confirmed by ultrasound uh, imaging and different papers showing uh, that the interscleen block performed at C7 uh, level, in fact, reduces the hemidiaphragmatic paresis. And uh, that is why uh, understanding the anatomy of phrenic nerve helps us to understand how we can spare this uh, complication of interscaline block. Uh, so finally, the food for thought would be to study these three papers. The first one uh, was published in 91. Uh, it basically showed that uh, any um, landmark-based or uh, peripheral nerve stimulator-based interscalene plexus -reflex block performed at C6 level involved a phrenic nerve in almost 100% of the cases. Uh, in 2008, a study was published uh, showing uh, the ultrasound anatomy of phrenic nerve and its implications for interscaline uh, brachial plexus block. And finally, in 2009, there was a study that uh, uh, performed uh, low volume interscaline blocks at C7 level um, and which showed that there was a reduced incidence of uh, phrenic nerve involvement and hence hemidiaphragmatic paresis with such an approach. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is the video podcast series by regional for trainees.com.